This video is going to be a more in-depth video on how I created the active ragdolls from my knight's fighting scene. I'm going to use this zombie model I made here. I'm going to make this scene that you see right here, this uh, where the zombies uh, are running in a horde and kind of colliding with each other. I just thought it was a good example to use. So yeah, we got this rigged zombie model here. Basically I just exported this as an FBX and uh, rigged it automatically in Mixamo. You can search for Mixamo rigging uh, on YouTube and you'll find a uh, many good tutorials for that. Alright, so first off we need to just fix the origin here because that seems a little bit off on uh, these ones. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select both of them and go object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And uh, there we go. Now the origin is at the center of the scene. And if we tab to edit mode and go pose, clear, transform all, we see that um, the rest pose is actually not a T pose here, uh, but it's uh, sort of more like an A pose. And we want to set the rest pose to be this T pose just so we can copy the animation later. And uh, if we just go pose, apply, apply pose, we'll see that it creates this problem here. So the way to actually apply this as a rest pose is to go to this object, then just duplicate this armature modifier. That makes it a little bit crazy like this. Apply the first one using Shift A. Then in pose mode, go pose, apply pose as rest pose. And uh, there we go. To create an active ragdoll, what we need to have first is a normal ragdoll in order to be able to use uh, rigid body dynamics on the limbs and stuff. We need to have colliders for each um, for each joint or sort of part. And we could go ahead and just add in cubes or spheres or something. But I find it easier to use a remesh of this object and then cut it into pieces. So let's just go ahead and duplicate this. Apply the armature. Hit Ctrl I to invert the selection and just hide that. And I I don't want the clothes to sort of calculate into the collision, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those. And then give this one a remesh modifier. And just change the value here a little bit. Let's just apply that. And you can see we have some loose parts like this. So I'm just gonna hit L to select all of the linked vertices and invert that selection and delete those. Alright, so to know where we actually want to cut it, it's useful to show the armature. Now we can see here the joints, that's where we want to cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a cube, this is going to be our cutter object. And I'm going to scale that down a little bit. And now we can go ahead and place this on all of the joints and then use boolean to cut it. And uh, to be able to do this quick boolean, we're going to have to go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then search for Bool Tool. And then it's just select this one, select this one, Control shift b and then select Difference. So I'm just going to duplicate this across all of the joints. Okay, so now we have our cutters. Let's just go ahead and perform the booleans here. Okay, there we go. Let's give that one a mirror modifier. Bisect and flip it. Let's apply that, go to edit mode and select everything and then hit P and separate by loose parts. Okay, so here we have our colliders. You can actually go ahead and move those to a new collection by hitting M and then name it something like colliders. Let's go ahead and set their origin to center of mass and clear their parenting. So just hit Alt P and then hit clear and keep transformation. Now because we move them to a new collection we can just hit select objects and that will select all of them. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a new remesh modifier and then a decimate modifier and set that to a low value. And now to be able to copy these modifiers across all of the objects, we're gonna have to enable the copy attribute add-on. So this one, then hit control C and copy modifiers. So we can hit control A and apply visual geometry to mesh. 
I get a lot of questions on my videos about how I learned to make certain things in Blender and how long it took and the answer is that it took way too long but it doesn't have to be that way for everyone. That's because Skillshare has over 700 classes on everything Blender related so regardless of your current skill level you're bound to learn a lot of new stuff and level up quicker than you thought was possible. That's because all of the information is structured in nice bite-sized chunks that makes it easy to take in a lot of information in less time. Now it doesn't just stop at Blender content, you can find courses on everything from photography and graphic design to music, cooking and even business and marketing related stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of value there if you want to check it out. The best part is Skillshare is giving away a free month of full access to the first 500 people to use my link in the description so you can try it now with no investment at all and see if it gives you the value that you're looking for. For someone who's just starting out this is a golden opportunity to build a strong foundation for future learning and I would recommend that you look at this 30 minute course by Southern Shoddy 3D that takes you through the basic interface of Blender and then you could move on to this longer four and a half hour course by Harry Helps and at that point you would pretty much know everything you need in order to start making stuff in Blender. So click the link in the description and see if you're one of the first 500 and if you are claim your free month now. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this channel and helping bring these videos to you. All right, so we have our colliders here. Let's select all of them. Go to Object, Rigid Body, Add Active. And now if we hit play, they'll actually fall. We can add in a plane, give that a passive rigid body and hide it. And yeah, it works. All right, so now let's go ahead and connect them using rigid body constraints. The easiest way to do this is to select one of them, shift select the other one, go to object, rigid body and hit connect. And then we can select the other ones and hit shift R to repeat that action. Okay, let's play that and see if they're connected. It looks like they are. Let's search for constraint here and select all of them in the outliner and then move them to a new collection and name it joint constraints or something similar to that. They are now set as fixed so it's really rigid like this. What I like to do is change them to generic spring instead and uh, right now I just changed one of them so go ahead and right click this and select copy to selected and that will copy this uh, setting to all of them. Okay, so we want to limit the linear translation, all of these to zero, copy to selected. Now it should be like a joint constraint. And the reason I selected generic spring is that we can add some spring damping to the rotation, which will make it a little bit more stiff. So just go ahead and enable angular springs here. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's pretty good. And if you want to, you can go ahead and change the angular limits to sort of limit the joints so they can't uh, bend in unnatural ways. But uh, um, yeah, I'm just gonna skip that part right now. <laughs> it's not really necessary. So yeah, we have some sort of ragdoll here. Let's also select them and disable this uh, box that says uh, disable collisions. And now they can actually collide with each other, which uh, gives a little bit more realistic result. Let's go ahead and switch to individual origins here and hit S to scale them down a little bit so they're easier to to see like this and if we hide the colliders now we can go ahead and actually place these joints where they're actually supposed to be. Okay I think that looks good let's see how it looks once we play it. Looks fine to me. Right so the logic here is that the armature controls the mesh and we want the bones to be controlled by these rigid bodies. So go to edit mode, select all of the bones which have a rigid body associated to it and what I mean by that is so for example these bones here uh, they're gonna share the same rigid body as this one so we're not gonna select these. And the same goes for the finger bones, those will be connected to this uh, rigid body. And then hit Alt P, clear parent. Now we can see these bones are not connected to each other anymore. Right now let's go ahead and select them again. Go to bone constraints, add a child of constraint, then hit Control C, 
copy bone constraint and now oh, now this constraint will be copied to all of them hide the mesh and for each bone select its uh, parent rigid body and now that we play the simulation the bones follows the rigid bodies we show the mesh again and then hide everything else we have a ragdoll and obviously this can interact with other rigid body objects like so all right so now that we have a functioning ragdoll here and we have everything organized into these collections uh, we can go ahead and start working on the actual uh, controlling of this object so it uh, it's actually going to have an uh, animation that it tries to follow uh, but can still collide with uh, other uh, ragdoll characters or the environment or anything and you can also switch it so it uh, sort of ragdolls uh, completely um, so yeah let's just go ahead and import the animation that i wanted to use for this first okay so here it is i made this animation using my rococo motion capture suit but as you can see i didn't have so much space on a set in my bedroom so uh, i didn't really have enough time to get a good run cycle so what i did was i used a running animation from mixamo and then just used the arms flailing around animation from my actual mocap but for the soldiers in the final scene i actually used the raw motion capture data which is just so cool <laughs> yeah so let's bring in the spliced one all right so here it is you can see it starts on a t pose which matches the pose of uh, this uh, armature and then it goes to this running loop here so the running is from mixamo and the arms flailing that's from my motion capture so now to be able to have this animation actually drive the ragdoll what we're gonna do is select the colliders here duplicate them just i'm gonna just place them above the character like this and then i'm gonna take this animation and place it right here then we can select the colliders that we just duplicated here and move them to a new collection and call that maybe driving colliders or something so let's go ahead and have these objects actually follow the driving animation and the way to do that is to select each part and shift select the armature then hit Control tab to go to post mode and then select the bone that you want to parent it to then hit Control p and parent to bone now you can see this rigid body follows the animation like so i'm just gonna do that for all of the pieces now let's see all right so we have the objects following the animation like so and now let's just connect these dynamic rigid bodies to these animated ones hide the joint constraints and the armature here select this one shift select this one go to object rigid body connect and uh, if we open this little menu here, it's set to center. So it's gonna be in the center, but we want it to be actually up here. So it's easier to keep track. So I'm just gonna set it to active. That's gonna put it up here on the active selection. Then just go ahead and shift R to do that for all of the parts. All right, let's take these constraints that we just made and move them to a new collection and name that driving constraints and if we play the simulation now it's gonna look completely insane so what we need to do is change actually just let's just scale those down a little bit and change them from fixed to generic spring and copy that to selected so it's applied to all of them then we only want the angular springs so enable those and if we play it you'll see it's pretty much ragdolling still but if we go ahead and increase the stiffness here and the damping and copy that to all of the constraints and you can see the effect taking place here it kind of tries to follow the rotation but right now it's a little too loose so let's increase the stiffness further and now it actually follows the animation pretty nicely let's just increase the friction here a little bit i have no idea why it's running backwards yes yeah, so i think the ragdoll might be a little too stiff and sort of might limit the motion so it's not uh, running correctly so let's select the joint constraints and maybe 
disable collisions again and enable the driving constraints obviously and yeah there we go so I think we can't really have the collision between the dynamic uh, rid bodies here but yeah now you can see it's uh, running and it's interacting with the environment let's just hide these relationship lines here uh, let's go here and then disable relationship lines it's perfect let's add in some obstacles maybe another really fun thing we can do is we can keyframe the driving constraints to turn off at a set point in the animation which will give us the effect of the character running and colliding with things and then just going completely limp and uh, the way we do that is to select the driving constraints give this a keyframe here go one frame forward disable it give it a new keyframe then hit ctrl l and link animation data that will keyframe all of the constraints if we move these forward a little bit we get this effect so that's pretty fun let's just move these forward for now increase the frame numbers a little bit and you'll notice it stops on frame 250 just like that and the reason for that is that in our scene settings our rigid body world is set to only simulate from frame 1 to 250 so let's set that to maybe 1000 or however long your scene is and now I'm gonna show you this cool little thing set the cursor to this object here and add in an empty then select the driving constraints and this armature and parent them to this empty and now if we give this a rotation keyframe on frame 1 enable auto keyframing we can actually control the um, direction of the run like this and that's the way I made the zombies uh, sort of turn around the corner and uh, change direction and obviously if you just duplicate this whole setup with all of the constraints and everything you can have multiple characters that will uh, collide with each other and it's just gonna look uh, really cool so yeah that's uh, about it